Bean Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So I know that there is a lag between the audio and the video. My apologies for that. I still have to fix this thing. And this weekend was the plan to fix it. And I am sick. That is why I didn't do it. That is my lame excuse to say I didn't do it. Okay, so my status. Let's go to the status chart and talk about it. I hope everybody is doing well and you're staying safe and happy and healthy. Let's see where I stand. So welcome to the humanities coffee shop where I have been receiving copies instead of uh, coffees instead of offering coffees. Uh, so here is the status for today. For uh, my son, he is uh, totally good and he has become uh, recovered enough that when I say, hey, how are you doing? He says, dad, stop annoying me. I'm okay. So that is good. Uh, my wife is recovered as well. She doesn't have any further breathing issues and she is fine. So these two guys are uh, back to normal. I This morning when I woke up, compared to yesterday and day before yesterday, where I would have some nasal congestion, some uh, feeling of uh, itchy sore throat or painful throat, I did not have any of that. I actually had a dry nose this morning and I said, wow, my nose is dry today. So that is what I saw. No uh, throat discomfort. Um, although during the day, I felt that my nasal congestion came back a little bit. And so I was talking with my doctor and he heard me and he said, you sound a little more congested. So start, start the antihistamine uh, nasal spray that he had sent. So I started that spray as well. I took that about an hour before this talk. So let's go over the chart and report what I've done. And for Bambi, she had asked to add anosmia and sleep and rest cycles in this chart as well. So I've added them at the end. So starting with the fatigue, I don't think I have any fatigue. Um, I felt this, for example, this morning, I have been going up and down, doing things and running along and kind of even testing my own Self and I was fine. However, at one point I thought that I brought some things, I was carrying them back up on my computer and my books and stuff and I felt a little tired. And I don't know if that is a new development or that is just because of this virus's progression. I was generally a little weaker. So otherwise didn't feel anything. I, I was bored out of my mind today though. I lie down on the bed the whole day did nothing just lie down so imagine if you just lie down and just stare at, at the roof that was just painful so <laughs> i have never done this before so headache no headache runny nose no runny nose nasal congestion yes you can actually hear it and this is after the antihistamine nasal spray before that it was a little more sore throat no cough no bronchial irritation so yesterday and day before i had some irritation remember yesterday i said i even had that little phlegm come up about four times no nothing like that happened today oxygen saturation stayed at 98 97 the whole day that is usually even before the virus i usually am 97 98 so that is where it stayed GIT issues, no GIT issues. That is interesting because I was thinking with IV, I have the GIT issue or maybe the COVID has the GIT symptoms as well, but no more GIT issue for a couple of days now. Immune system, I still don't have any fever. There is nothing painful. There is no swelling of the face or throat. So that all is still seems like it's okay. Tinnitus, today I did not have tinnitus. tinnitus. So yesterday, I actually had a few spells of tinnitus. Even during a talk, in the beginning, I had the tinnitus on the right side, and then I had it on the left side. Today, I did not have any spell of tinnitus. Anosmia, I have no anosmia. Actually, I keep testing my sense of smell all the time because I feel that that is an important uh, clue for, number one, it is COVID or not, and number two, is it Delta. So no anosmia. But you can certainly tell the congestion, the nasal congestion. And then sleep and rest. So interestingly, I have been sleeping better than I sleep usually. So during these days, my sleep has actually improved. And that may be because of fatigue. That may also be because of some of the drugs. For example, IV can cause some of the dizziness. 
So I'm not taking melatonin and that is not by uh, design. I just didn't have melatonin and I didn't go to the CVS because I didn't want to expose anyone. So I'm just out of melatonin. So I didn't take that. Um, I'm taking all the other things. So there is something that has improved my sleep. Is that the general fatigue or me being tired with the virus or some of the medicines? Don't know. Now, in terms of the medicines, and I wanted to go back to this diagram because it is it this diagram speaks to me every day. Uh, today, I did develop some nasal congestion near five-ish, and that's why I took that nasal spray as well. So today, it looked like the the, the Ronas woke up <laughs> with their alarm clock and tried to attack me again. So this is the situation now. The medicines. Um, Medrel pack is still continuing. Today would be the second day. Um, there is the doxycycline. And some folks said yesterday, I mean, some folks became very upset that why did I take doxycycline? The doctor, my doctor, when he was prescribing doxycycline, there were a couple of things in his mind. Number one, he said that it is seen that many times patients develop secondary infections, bacterial infections, which are superimposed. And he didn't want to take that risk. And he said, you have reached that point in days Today is, I believe, eighth day finishing. So you said that it is possible that you would start developing secondary infections, and I don't want that to happen. So I want you to be on doxycycline. That is one. Secondly, that is not this doctor's one, but I know that traditionally what happened was when IV study, original study came in from Kelly, he had done IV plus azithromycin. And he said that without azithromycin, IV's potential was less, and with azithromycin, the lufimectin's potential increased. And Dr. Alam from Bangladesh, when he started using lufimectin, he added doxycycline to it. So I think there is a, a cultural aspect to it as well that it got stuck in people's mind that one can use doxycycline as well. So uh, why doxycycline and not azithromycin, which was in the Kali, these are the backgrounds to that. We have done this talk before. Um, and so I am actually okay if, if my doctor is prescribing dox doxycycline because that little irritation in the bronchi, if it is viral, then sure, dox is not going to do much to it. But if it is uh, secondary bacterial, then there is a help available. There are folks who say that the these drugs are anti-inflammatory as well. I don't think that antibacterials are needed to be anti-inflammatory. If there is a need for anti-inflammatory, there are so many other specific anti-inflammatories. So that is the discussion of that. Um, Lufimectin is continuing. Uh, DMB, D3, magnesium, B12 is continuing. Zinc and quercetin is continuing. And you know some other as well. So this is what is happening. This morning, I thought I did not need anything. This evening, I thought I should continue with our medicines. So this is the cycle. So the virus is kind of still hanging in there and I can feel it that I have it. In the morning, I felt 100%. In the morning, I had actually declared to my wife that, hey, I think I'm done. But as the day progressed, I felt that there is something there. My voice changed a little bit. My nose became a little congested. So that is what is happening. Today is the end of day eight. According to the days I have been um, thinking about. So when I did the test, before that, I know that about four days I had been complaining here on the talks and saying that, hey, I'm, I'm tired or I have this cough because of the vents or um, before that I was tired when Luffy had to go out. So that was four days before that. So I am keeping a track like that. It is possible that my track is actually incorrect. It can be incorrect in both ways. It could even be before that, or it could be later. So at least from that point of view, I'm on day eight. We'll see. I hope it is day eight and we are done and we move forward, but we'll see how it goes. Tests are not available. I've been trying to get some antigen tests to make sure that I can figure out if I'm becoming negative or not. Um, there is a doctor who is uh, uh, prescribing me the tests and let's see if uh, they can send me some tests from there, we'll see. But that is the overall status. I'm going to quickly look at the uh, 
questions if there are any and then we'll do a quick roundup of the news as well just so that um, we can look into that so Rima says has anyone solved the, their tinnitus so within my um, area where I have been looking at there has been uh, a family member of mine here in the US who developed tinnitus and severe tinnitus and then after low dose naltrexone she felt much better and now a few days ago when I spoke with her she didn't have tinnitus anymore she actually developed COVID after that as well so her story is she had COVID last year then she had vaccine then she became um, she had post-vaccine si lingering side effects for a long time. Then she got COVID again. And during this process, she had tinnitus, which is now gone. That is one. Um, secondly, is we have talked with Sean. Sean's tinnitus is still not resolved. And sometimes it becomes very bad, as he reported last time. And sometimes it becomes a little um, less. Um, there are other cases where tinnitus has been um, improved, has improved. Okay, so now, how are things? So, um, Krista Listener says, does Doxy have any antiviral effect? I've heard other Doxy say no. So, what happened was that as Doxy entered the mainstream thinking process, that doctors thought we can use it, then... Uh, they did not know the basic background for how it started getting used. It just became a protocol. And so many folks then said, hey, there are studies that it can act as an anti-inflammatory. And yes, you can find studies that it can act as an anti-inflammatory. But giving doxycycline as an anti-inflammatory means that other anti-inflammatories are not working. And there are better anti-inflammatories than doxy. So doxy as an anti-inflammatory is not the real thing. Neither, there are antiviral studies as well. But again, DOX is not a great antiviral for SARS-CoV-2 like viruses. DOX's main uh, role is to help prevent or if the secondary infections are starting to help eradicate them if possible. So that is the main role. And the second role is that with, as I said before, uh, why did Dr. Alam decided to use doxy instead of azithromycin is what he knows. But then it became a com combination that just started circulating the interwebs. And so that is how doxy just became a partner with IV. I actually know that many communities and doctors there, they dropped the IV and they kept the doxy. And so doxy became the protocol. In many communities, doctors still just use doxy and they are not aware of the combination that originally started. This is an interesting question. Um, I have bad stomach issues, but keep testing negative on home tests for COVID. Could I have it in GI and test negative? So a couple of answers to that. Number one, um, we have uh, there have been studies that SARS-CoV-2 can stick out in GIT for at least 60 days after the symptoms are over and it is cleared. And now does it stick there in a live, replicable, um, viable state? Study says that no, it is kind of just the debris is sitting in the cells and can cause cells to be irritated. That can cause continuous uh, GIT symptoms. And this, the shedding of the virus in the fecal matter is for up to 59 days after the infection, but these are particulate non-viable viruses or broken up pieces. The other is that it is possible that some, some folks develop long COVID and one of the symptoms of the long COVID is the GIT issue. So the virus is gone, but the immune system is now dysregulating and GIT issues are unmasked because of, let's say, mass cell activation syndrome. So in those cases, if you look at the FLCCC, there are protocols there. It may be interesting to see some of those protocols. So um, I also wanted to, just as 
I said before, I don't want you to just come in and hear what Mubin, Mubin's status is. I wanted us to go over some of the news too. Once again, I have opened these Yahoo links. I hope they have not changed on me. So let's see. So this is drbean.com. Um, Cleveland Clinic. Disable your ad blocker. So the problem is I actually am fine with the systems to use the ads to earn, but there are so many ads. So I'm going to put it up in, in a different browser. There are so many ads and it becomes very difficult to teach with those ads going and some of those start videos and it just becomes a mess. So there is a, there is a real low quality of usage when the ads are on, especially during the teaching. So anyways, I wanted to share this. COVID-19 deaths notably rise as hospitalizations dip. Weekly COVID roundup. So what they're saying is that the deaths are still high. Now, some of those are going to be contributed by Delta, some are by Omicron. But generally what they're saying is, and they say this is a subscription one, but anyways, please, the link is in the description. Check it out. They are saying that hospitalizations climbed to higher, but they are now reducing. So that is one. Unfortunately, not the best experience with our dear Cleveland Clinic. Then Denmark lifts COVID restrictions, opens many public venues. So that is an interesting one. So Denmark had, has decided that lift a number of coronavirus restriction, restrictions and allowed the reopening of certain venues. So cinemas, zoos, museums, theaters were among the places that could welcome visitors. Again, limited numbers of spectators are also are allowed to attend indoor and outdoor sports events. Then they're saying the government is planning to relax coronavirus restrictions further in Denmark, a country of 5.1 million, on January 31. So it is an interesting take. So please, uh, if you have some time, um, read that. Now, this one is more patients are getting COVID-19 during hospital stays. So now this is um, another issue that is happening. And this issue has been happening with, uh, for example, staphylococcal infections are very commonly moved from hospital staff from patient to patient. So these are nosocomial infections or the infections caused by the facilities itself. So now that is happening with COVID as well. So more patients are getting COVID-19 during hospital stays. Expert, experts worry it's because infected healthcare workers are sick on the job. So there are two issues. I believe that there is a carriage as well. And then there are people who are working there and they are sick or they are shedding. And that may have something to do with, you know, people asked to come back after five days type things. Although now they say that, hey, test negative and come back, but there are no tests available. So this is an interesting thing that now the um, spread is by people who are healthcare workers and they may not be. So, and I feel for healthcare workers, I really salute them. I really respect them. They have for two years, been on the front end, gotten beaten up by taking care of the patients and wearing those PPEs and doing all those uh, sanitization processes and going through that process, putting themselves at risk on daily basis. And then not everyone is grateful to them. And that is a bad thing. So I really am grateful and thankful for their service. Now, Texas scientists, new COVID-19 vaccine is cheaper easier to make and patent free. So this is a, a vaccine, which is, let me just very quickly um, share the mechanism. So what they did was they, take, they took LD cells, and this is a vaccine that, this is a technique that has been used to make vaccines all along for a long time. So it's not new, and that is why it is not patentable. Number one, number two, it is cheap. And so let's say here is an LG cell. LG, you know, the, those little things. LG cell. And if you give this LG cell the messenger RNA or RNA of the spike protein, then this LG cell is going to make the spike proteins. 
those spike proteins can then be harvested from this LG cell. And these spike proteins can be then bottled up. And all of a sudden, we have a vaccine. This is a very similar vaccine, like a Novavax vaccine, which is also made in non-human cells. So this is going to be called the subprotein vaccine, and it is made up of this spike protein. So that is what they're talking about. So they're saying tex Texas scientists, they have a new COVID vaccine. So if you go down here and scroll to it, they say that, so the vaccine name is Corbivax, and they have done the clinical trial data has yet to be released, but Texas Children's Hospital said the vaccine was over 90% effective against the original COVID strain and over 80% effective against Delta. I am sure that its efficacy is now dropped, but I hope they can change that. And then they say the vaccine uses a platform, if you read here, the Corbivax vaccine uses a platform called recombinant protein subunit technology, which places an actual piece of COVID spike protein in yeast cell. That's really not accurate. It places the genetic material for the spike protein in the yeast cell, allowing the yeast cell to make those spikes as well. Maybe there is another technology that they're using, but that's what I know. The yeast cell then copy the vital protein and the protein is introduced to the immune system. So this is an interesting vaccine. And then there is another important thing, um, this one. So if you see here, Biological E, an Indian pharmaceutical company accustomed to produce hepatitis B vaccine with whom Butazi's team, so these doctors team, researchers, has a long-standing relationship has already produced 150 million doses of the new Corbivax vaccine and will soon be able to produce 100 million doses every month. So there is a new vaccine as well that is interesting. So then <clears throat> my triple vaxxed 85 year old mother caught COVID medical triage made her doctors useless. So this is a very similar experience as I had that I went to the doctor and he said, you're not eligible. I am actually so, so uh, upset that our preparation is just nowhere. So we said, well, we have Paxlovid and we have Molupiravir and everything else should get aside and badmouth everything. And there were media cycles to badmouth ivermectin and call it horse paste and, and just suppress it and stop it. And then we come out and we say, now we got something and that something is not available. And this is what happened. This person has written this uh, um, little article here where his mother uh, became positive and he reached out to his doctor and he said, can you, are you thinking about Paxlovid or monoclonal antibodies? And the doctor said, no. And because we have limited, first, the doctor was not there and a nurse came in and they were not aware of this. And then they said, okay, let me connect you to the doctors who can help with this. Then the doctors who got connected, they said, we cannot prescribe it. We have to do a triage. So there is a group of doctors who would discuss that who should get the medicine because it is short supply. And then they came back many, many days later and had that discussion. Finally, they found out that there is a site where you could get the monoclonals. So they went there and got it. So it's a mess. And that is what is uh, here. And then Australia has decided to lift, to let COVID rip. Is that a good idea? So what they're saying is that Australia has started saying that, all right, you know what, let's live with it. Now this news, this is uh, January 16, Sydney. They are saying that, Australia, so if you see here, Prime Minister Scott Morrison declared it is now possible to live with this virus. So as Australia moved to change course on its pandemic strategy, the highly transmissible Omicron variant hit. In just over a month, cases have risen from 1,000 a day to more than 100,000 a day. So my question uh, to anyone who is from Australia and who is here, what is the situation over there? So if, if this, as the news say over here, that Australia has decided to live with it. What does that mean? Have they decided to just keep going with it? No more restrictions? For much of the pandemic, Australia aimed for zero COVID cases. 
But as the pandemic ground on, the government decided restriction should start to be dramatically loosened when a state of ter- state or territory vaccinated 80% of its over 16 population. All states and territories achieved this in the final months of the last year. So I am really, I'll do some more um, digging, but this was an interesting take because I thought Australia was being very, very tough. And then here is a TV anchor who got the COVID a second time. So the the point is, people can be previously infected and they can get the infection. People can be in, uh, vaccinated and they can get an infection. People can even be triple vaccinated, as you saw in that news, and still get an infection. So um, Janet says, uh, thank you, Dr. Bean, for all the information. Do you know which company made your antibody test? I have to go check. I do not remember. That's a good question. Although it came back positive. Joanne says, same as UK, supply chain issues. The government basically wants to wipe its hands of responsibility. It's just so. Why can't they then let the doctors decide the best they can and let them continue to prescribe and continue to use off-label options. On one hand, they're all stopped from doing what they think can be done. On the other hand, there is a hope that here are the drugs that are available and then they're not there. Imagine how the, the scare, so I'm a patient right now. Imagine if I start becoming worse tomorrow. I have no hope that the medicines are available, but they may not be available for me because my doctor thinks I'm not eligible. Okay, so this is where we are at. This is how I look and sound today. Uh, It seems like I'm fine other than that little nasal congestion. So that it tells me that it is still there. Now, how long it is going to stay there, we'll see. So Don says, I hear this going into your lungs. Please drink enough water. Yes, thank you very much. We'll do. Simple Garden says, yeah, welcome to our world. Um, Laura, correct. Let doctors be doctors. You're trying their hands, but then you don't have an option So this is where we are at. Thank you very much for being here. I'm a little more animated because hey, I, at least I feel better. We'll see. I don't think I'm out of the woods yet. I still think that I have some discomfort here. We'll see how it goes and uh, I'll c- continue to report. But from tomorrow, I'm hoping that we go back to our normal process of normal lectures too. So with this, please have a good Have a great, have a best weekend. Continue to stay safe, happy, and healthy. And if you would like to support this work, there are links in the description. You can buy me a coffee, or you can use PayPal, or you can be, uh, you can use Patreon, and you can become a patron. And at the same time, if you wanted to do just a little bit, you could just like, subscribe, and share. And this is good. As is your face seems flushed because my wife turned the heater on just before this lecture. And it is 70 degrees here. And both of those lights are, they are hot as well. And so I am, as I say to my wife, sometimes when I get blasted by heaters, that I become a, a boiled potato. So right now I've become a boiled potato sitting here. So my wife is doing better. My son is good. My wife is good. I am still going through this. I think so. All right. So with this, 
<laughs> gift 24 says how about a baked potato instead of a boiled potato fine yes i am a baked potato now sky frog you have a great evening as well and let's go from there we'll see each other hopefully tomorrow i keep saying hopefully because i don't know if tomorrow i'll be in a hospital or not so far so good i'm here please like subscribe and share please if you would like to support this work there is a link in the description to buy me a coffee another link for paypal another link to be a patreon thank you very much love you and i'll see you tomorrow